I'm going to cover off invention first. Kind of, I've done it two two separate slide deck packs. So um, we're going to cover invention first, and then we'll move on to the manufacturing side afterwards. Um, so we'll cover um, uh, the two things quite separately. But uh, if anyone wants to leave after the invention, if that's all interested in, that's fine. OK, so invention, um, pretty fundamental. Um, most people are probably familiar with it. But uh, invention is the process of creating the duplicate copies, which turn into tech two modules, rigs, and ships. Um, just to cover off a quick historical thing around Tech 2 Blueprint Originals. Uh, there was a lottery a few years ago uh, where uh, CCP gave out some random uh, Blueprint Original Tech 2s to just random players. And uh, those are now still in the game, although probably less so as people just left the game and never passed them on, etc. Um, they are worth um, tens of billions of risk and really more collector's items than they are uh, really uh, something that gets bought and sold quite a lot. So um, I wouldn't recommend going off and rushing off and trying to find a, a Tech 2 Blueprint original. Um, I think they're, I think I saw Hobgoblin 1 for about 40 billion, for example. So um, I think I worked out once it would take someone about five years in real, real time to make back that kind of risk from that type of module. But there you go. People still want them. Um, you can make some miscom invention. Um, some people will just buy the blueprint copies uh, off you, but they are not available on the market. They would only be available on uh, contracts. So um, if you're looking for a, a particular tech to blueprint copy, then that will be on uh, contracts rather than at well, probably the location would be trade hubs, but uh, you will find them on the the local market tab. Uh, just a side question: Is uh, also uh, Inventing jump freighters. Uh, I think I got part of the question there. Um, so yes, uh, jump freighter is just a, really a tech two version of a freighter. So uh, if you have got your hands on a tech one blueprint original, you can make copies of that and invent on that to uh, get a tech two uh, jump freighter blueprint copy. Uh, don't forget though, before you do go off and rush off and buy every BPO for tech one items in the game, there are some variants which don't have tech two versions. Uh, used to be some frigates, they didn't have tech two, but now they do. But um, probably the most easy example is ammo. Not all ammo types have tech two variants, only some of them. Um, on to slide number four, which is around the in game skills for invention. Um, so you can see here there's minimum skills which you need to achieve invention. Um, so we've got CPU management two, power grid two, electronic upgrades three, science, which is where this tree really sits up to five. Um, not quite sure why the hacking's there, but the hacking too, um, probably from a, an encryption perspective, I guess, was maybe the reasoning for hacking too. Um, you will need at least one of the racial encryption methods. So, for example, a MAR encryption method, um, or Kodari, or Galente, depending on what you want to make. Um, you don't need to have all of those, but you will be constrained by making uh, only certain types of ships or certain modules by um, not learning all of them. Um, most probably serious and interested lists will have all of those learnt to a good level. Um, you also need at least two of the advanced technology skills. Um, so if you don't know what they are, they're things like rocket science, um, uh, nano engineering. There's, all, there's a whole range of them, uh, which we'll cover off in some little detail later. But uh, you do need uh, some frequent requisites for those as well. So it really depends on what you're making. But um, an example of use there is rocket science requires mechanics level five. So um, invention is quite a long train to get into. If you're looking at potentially about a month at least to start um, at least one uh, faction tree of invention, and probably a couple months to get good at everything. So, is it worth doing a neural remap for just training the invention skills? Uh, it's going to be one of those answers where it probably depends how far and deep you want to get into it. Um, I mean, uh, perfect skills. That's uh, pretty much that's personally I what I was looking into when I uh, wanted to. Yeah, sorry, you broke up again there, but um, I get the question. So I'll give you my example. Um, I have remapped my character to intelligence and memory. That's to get through all those science skills and those advanced skills. Um, so yes, if you're looking to get really deep into industry tech two and even tech three, then. 
yes, I would recommend um, a remap if um, it will save you several weeks, if not months, of training. Okay, skill progression in terms of how um, you improve on that. So um, increasing the chance of success, so the better you learn your skills, especially the racial encryption methods, um, the better your success chances will get. And I'll go through the, the formula for that later. Now, the other benefit of learning these advanced technology skills uh, is the search agents and data core farming. So uh, quick summary on that. Um, there are mission agents called research agents. Um, they will only talk to you if you have an equivalent level of skill in their advanced science, and they do have, I think, up to four each. Um, so a level three agent won't talk to you if you only have a level one skill in their advanced technologies, for example. So uh, the higher the level of the skill and the agent, the more data cores you get. And data cores are part of the invention process, and it's called farming because it's largely a, um, a passive activity where um, your research agent will grant you a certain number of research points every day. And uh, when you get to 100 points, I think it is, then you can exchange that for a data core. So most people kind of have several agents running and just kind of let them run for a few weeks and then go and collect some data cores. Uh, laboratory operation and advanced laboratory operation are skills which let you increase the number of different science jobs you can run. So unless you want to be constrained to just one invention at a time, then uh, those both are skills that, again, just this will have probably to five, five to give themselves 10 science jobs. And that would be partly because they'll probably be doing research to improve efficiency, but um, uh, their use potentially two or three different invention jobs at one time as well to get some blueprints ready to make. Uh, and I, I had another question. Uh, when I was checking the science category, there, there were some skills called Tai Leng skill or something like that. It's some sort of Chinese word. Yeah, so there are um, several skills in the uh, science tree which relate to um, kind of storyline items and steeper items. So if you've done any of the... Um, uh, the exploration sites uh, called sleeper caches, then they drop um, kind of what's called storyline items, and some skills are specific to just those items. So, uh, yeah, Talo Talokan technology, Yangjing technology, founder skills. Yes, so I'll link uh, something in chat. Um, so, I've just linked a blueprint in the lecture.eu channel. Um, so, that's a storyline item. So it's kind of like a faction item. It's got the green mark on it, but it's um, not related to a direct faction. It's a storyline item. So they're quite rare. You get them through certain exploration sites. And if you click on that, um, you see the required skills to make those items is Industry 5 and something called Tech Mao Technology 2. So it's not really a Tech 2 industry. Uh, it's more like a, a kind of advanced version of Tech 1 industry. Uh, I see. But the sleeper, sleeper, and also the sleeper goes for Tech 3, right? Um, so again, I think the sleeper technology relates to certain storyline items. Um, tech 3 is very much just advanced, it's almost like advanced Tech 2 skills, so you need to max out things like your um, encryption skills, I think up to four, and you need to have ship building skills up to five for those. So the sleep encryption methods actually relate to storyline items rather than um, a tech three industry. Okay, there's a question in chat channel about uh, research agents. So uh, Rohan asks, uh, is that also dependent upon the standing you have with the agents corporation? Um, uh, ooh, I haven't thought about that for ages, actually. Um, I think uh, I think it's not actually. I think it's directly related to just the science skills, but I have to probably double check that to be sure. Okay, go on to slide five. Um, so, what you need to do invention. Um, so, you can do invention in stations. Uh, they have to have this the um, the science uh, services enabled. Though, so not all stations will do invention, but um, the white ones will. That do industry. Um, you can also do invention in uh, player-owned star bases, what's called POS. Uh, you do need a design laboratory for that as well. So those are the kind of star uh, player-owned star bases which float around moons, uh, which is the kind of old and still existing um, player-owned structures. Uh, but you can also now do them in the engineering complexes, which are the, the latest version of the citadels that have come out recently, which allow you to do 
um, industry in them. So um, those will eventually replace uh, POS. So um, going forward, probably in about a year's time, we'll probably see POSs just disappear from the game. And um, in terms of player-owned structures, uh, engineering complexes will be the only, um, well, will, will be the way forward for uh, industry in, in station. Uh, you also need a, a blueprint copy of the TechCon variant. Um, so that's one of the inputs you need. Um, you can have a multiple one tech one blueprint copy uh, and you can queue up multiple ones of that invention in a single uh, queue line if that makes sense so if you have a 10 run blueprint copy of a tech one variant you can actually queue up 10 inventions on that one blueprint at one time and it'll keep on churning over and you get a mixture of success and failures uh, depending on the random chance out of those 10 attempts on that blueprint um, you can just do one invention at a time though um, you also need what are called data cores, so two types of data cores as well. Um, the number of those actually depends on the size of the item. So uh, modules will require a couple. Uh, when you get into large items like large modules or battleships, then you could get up to even 32 of each type. So, um, so the more you, data cores you need, the, well, the bigger the item, the more data cores you need. That's the basic thing there. Um, the example I've used there is a venture, which is a figure, it requires two. When you look at something like a barge, to invent in the consumer, then you're looking at eight. Um, and they go up exponentially like that, so it's like eight, sixteen, thirty-two. And there are also optional items, which are called decryptors. Yeah, so decryptors um, are kind of an interesting element of the invention process. Uh, they can have a number of effects. Uh, they can give you a better chance of success, which is quite important. Uh, they can also give you material and time efficiency on the resultant uh, Tech 2 blueprint copy that you get. And they can also increase the number of runs that you get on that Tech 2 copy as well. Interestingly, some decryptors have, actually have a negative effect on the chance of success. But they do trade that off with uh, larger number of runs. So um, if you do look at the list of decryptors, which I've got at the end of the pack there, you see the different types and um, what they do for you. So. Some people will be happy to go for the decreased success chance based on profitability of the item, uh, or their base chance is quite good anyway. So I think Bjorn was maybe unaware of the multiple invention per job, I think. It's not something I do commonly myself, but I believe that's the case. You can do, uh, you can do several different, uh, well, you can do lots of runs of invention from a single line on your jobs, I believe. Although I'll be happy to be corrected if someone knows different. Yeah, I did a lot of invention, say, two or three years ago, and I don't think, I think it was only one invention run at a time back then. Or you could, and I was just doing it wrong the whole time. No, my friend told me that's what they used to do. They used to actually manufacture until they only had one run of the BPC left, and then they would use that one last run for the uh, invention because it would d destroy it if it failed. Yeah, that's what I remember as well is especially for ships and stuff like that, you would only ever use one run BPCs because it would destroy it no matter how many runs you had on it. I'll just try it quickly. No, I've actually got something I can do on. I do believe that changed, though. Like I said, I think that's from a few years back. Yeah, yeah. if they changed it, then yeah. that's awesome, and I might have to get back into Tech 2. Yeah, so I have just queued up my own job. Of, um, I've had an infiltrator blueprint copy with lots of ones on it, so I've just queued up three ones of that invention and um, it's taken up one line of my jobs. So yes, it's correct. You could have well, almost an infinite number of different inventions going on at one time, but obviously they're the more you do at one time, the longer they're going to take. But yes, well, one line can be used for multiple inventions of the same blueprint copy. Okay, and then this is going to slide six. So um, you can see the basic invention screen on slide six. Um, so it gives you the view of what you see. If you have a, a blueprint copy of a tech one item, that can be invented into Tech 2. Um, some items, like the example here, which is a ammunition one, have different variants of Tech 2 as well. So if you have one of these items, you may get a, a kind of lined out box on the right-hand side where it's got the outcome, and that's because you need to select which variant that you want. And some ships also have that where, um, for example, salt, assault frigates can be one or the other. There's two different types of assault frigates, but they both invent on the same uh, original variant, so you have to select which one you want as your outcome. Uh, when you have the items all in place, then you'll see the start button, go that nice kind of blue color, and um, off you go. 
um, I tend to always recommend using decryptors. Um, if you do a fair amount of exploration, you'll probably have a bunch of them stored up, and you might as well use them, is my kind of my view. Uh, if you're inventing on more expensive items, um, like ships, large ships in particular, then you definitely want to use a decryptor because um, there's not a lot of value in getting a, a one run variant of a, a, a ship blueprint. You do want multiple ones from a efficiency and a risk perspective. Um, so slide seven, this is the, I guess, the key thing with invention. Um, so there's a formula around invention. So it is, it is always a random chance. Uh, it won't be guaranteed, and the actual percentages are fairly low when you think about it. But especially uh, there's a, a base chance, uh, depending on what the item is. Um, so module ships um, and different types of ships all have a base variant, for example. And uh, that is multiplied by 1 plus uh, C and D. And C is the total levels of the two advanced science skills that you have divided by 30. And D is the racial encryption level divided by 40. So Going back to the skills slide um, earlier on, you can see the benefits of skilling up your levels in both advanced technology sciences and encryption. Uh, effectively, they give you a better invention chance uh, for, the, for the invention process. Um, the example I've used there is uh, for Afterburner, for example, uh, being a module, we have a base chance of 34%. And depending on, on the skills I've plugged into my example is uh, level three in molecular engineering, uh, rocket science four, and Minmatar encryption level four. So, so how did you get to that point one seven five? Because my math's not adding that up right. So it says uh, the two advanced technology science skills. Is that your rocket science and Minmatar encryption? No. So the science skills are the molecular engineering and the rocket science. So three and four. So you add those together, and then you divide by thirty. Yeah, I get 0.233 on my calculator. That's what was throwing me off. Okay. Yeah, I might have just maybe got to with it. <laughs> I think I do remember when I originally put the slides together, I may not have uh, got a different result to what the game actually told me, and that, that might be why. Um, so, but yes, if you have then your racial encryption level higher, then the better chance, and likewise for the skills. Uh, I think without a, without any decryptors at all, you're going to struggle to get. Uh, better than 50% even with maxed out skills. Um, so that it, the, the actual tech to enriching chance um, unaided is uh, not that great. Um, so that's why we bring in the optional decryptors. So as I said earlier, um, they could have a major impact on the, event, on the success invention chance. Uh, and they have a, and some of them as well have material and time efficiencies and number ones as well. And uh, the more expensive decryptors will have benefits to most of those things, uh, and particularly the attainment ones with the big ones will have will cost you maybe about five million, I think, at the trade hub, uh, roughly. So you need to factor that into whether it's worthwhile buying those decryptors and using them as part of your invention process when you go on to make the item, if that's what you're going to do. A um, little bit, a little bit about the play on structures here. So um, if you're back to the pause process and you have design laboratories, then um, Nothing actually benefits the invention chance, but you can do other side benefits by um, uh, reducing the duration of invention. So um, um, there's no structures which actually benefit the percentage chance of success, but uh, uh, both POS and engineer complexes actually reduce the time taken to uh, do the invention, um, particularly on things like ships. Um, invention can take uh, several hours. I think uh, medium ships is something like 16 hours. So dropping that duration is quite useful because it frees up, you, frees up your job to do something else, either uh, efficiency or invention. Uh, are there any implants for that can help you invent? Um, not that available. I think some of the data mining tools out there actually show you um, implants which look like they well which do increase in um invention chance but they're not actually available so i think at some point ccp either released them and do them or plan to release them and never did but um currently as we speak there are no implants that can improve your invention chances unfortunately it'd be nice if there were so obviously you need to um, amend my uh, formula which is probably why i was getting a different result to uh, to what the game was telling me when i did that example but uh, that probably explains that but um that's 
that's actually an end of the invention slides. So are there any more questions on invention? Can can invention be profitable at all? I mean, uh, by j just selling the blueprints generally. Um, so I'm going to say um, yes in a small scale. Um, if you do look for Tech 2 blueprints in contracts, there's not many available. So uh, I think when I looked a while back, um, there were kind of single figures, which is quite unusual for Eve, given how much um, people produce stuff. Um, so I would say yes for certain items, but um, generally uh, I don't think there's really a, an ISK making career in just doing nothing but invention. I think uh, realistically, most people do invention to go on to make the items. So it's kind of kind of yes, but um, you're probably going to get quite big peaks and troughs in that. Is data core farming the only way to get data cores um, aside from exploration? So um, if you're going to get them yourself, then yes, you either have to do exploration or you do data core, data core farming through the agents. Obviously, if you not into either of those things, you can just go and buy buy them on the market. Um, so, but no, there's no other in-game way to get uh, data cores other than just in hacking cans through invention or the, the research agents.